Hello and welcome back to the Death Row and Executions channel. My name is Paco Rivera. Melissa Lucille was convicted of killing her two-year-old daughter Mariah in the year 2007. The following year, in July of 2008, she was found guilty and a month later was sentenced to death. She has been on death row now for almost 14 years. Should Texas carry out the execution as scheduled, Lucille will become the first Mexican-American woman executed in that state, the first woman of any Hispanic origin executed in that state, since Josefa Chapita Rodriguez was legally hanged to death in Texas on November 13th of the year 1863, 158 years ago. We're talking about a high-profile case that's gotten a lot of media attention, especially after the mostly one-sided documentary from the year 2020, The State of Texas versus Melissa, was broadcast to a nationwide audience, and many have come to her defense. There has been a big push from supporters of Melissa Lucille to watch that documentary. At rallies, her supporters and advocates against capital punishment are seen holding signs that say, watch the film. But there are several facts in the case that were not presented in that documentary that I will be telling you about in this video. If you happen to be one of those who are outraged at how a jury in Texas could have found Melissa Lucille guilty, there are many others out there besides the jury of 12 persons whom voted unanimously to convict whom don't agree with you. Here are just a few comments from various sources on, on the web. This one was directed at me. They need to get these executions done as these people have been on death row too long and exhausted all appeals. The woman absolutely needs to be executed for smashing her baby's head in. Wait until you go down that rabbit hole. She had 14 children and abused every one of them, according to witnesses who testified against her, including family members. She is guilty of beating this baby to death, and she is a monster. Now, to be fair, I have not been able to fully verify some of the claims made in this comment. Bear in mind that two of Lucille's babies, twins, she had in jail after she was arrested, and they were quickly given up for adoption. So, of course, any abuse doesn't include them. Also, while Lucille gave birth to 14 children during her lifetime, some of them were already grown adults no longer living with her at the time of baby Mariah's death. Here's another. Even if she didn't abuse the kids, she let the kids get abused. It's the same blank. She's guilty. She let the kids go unfed. She's seen the blank her kids went through and didn't do anything. Even if she didn't do it, she's guilty. Now, this comment that I just read is similar uh, to something that I had planned to discuss that will be coming up in a bit. Melissa Lucille is guilty of sin and all of you are being duped. Stop donating to the Innocence Project. As a Latino raised by La Chancla, La Chancla is Spanish for a sandal or flip-flop. In Mexican culture, uh, mothers wearing chanclas would use them to beat their kids to get them to behave. As a Latino raised by La Chancla and the belt and the wooden spoon, I believe Melissa Lucio is guilty. She gave birth to more than 10 children, and the reports indicate her little daughter had old bruises. From all the materials I've gathered, it appears the jury based their decision to convict on mostly two factors. One was her own admission of guilt, though much of that has been disputed with arguments that it occurred during a six-hour interrogation with Texas Rangers without a lawyer present and had been coerced from her or forced from her, resulting in a false confession. The second would be the medical examiner's autopsy report. The cause of death was reported to be blunt force trauma to the head, and they emphatically insist 
that those type of injuries to the back and sides of her head did not and could not have come from a fall down a flight of stairs, as Melissa Lucille's defense has claimed is how the child died. Now, if I can add a third reason why a jury may have found Melissa Lucille guilty, uh, juries can be very unpredictable at times. Regardless of the instructions provided by a judge that to convict someone of murder, you must conclude from the evidence presented at trial that a murder took place, they might just overlook that. The third reason was that she may have been considered to be a horrible mother. I know in our current judicial system, being a horrible mother is not a crime punishable by death. However, the Cameron County jury listened to testimony about the emergency room doctor who first examined the toddler and had declared it to be the absolute worst case of child abuse he had ever seen in his 30 years of practice. So putting aside the fact that many of the injuries that baby had sustained occurred over an extended period of time, and that maybe it was not a single case of abuse that got baby Mariah killed, maybe that jury had heard enough and decided Melissa Lucio needs to be erased from the earth. In other words, we're talking about a jury that found her guilty and she was sentenced to death because of a prolonged history of abuse that led to the baby's death. My name is Melissa Elizabeth Lucio. I'm 48 years old. I've been on death row 11 years. She appears very sweet and gentle in this documentary, doesn't she? The prosecution presented arguments at trial by informing the court that during the time Melissa Lucille was in jail, she often displayed violent, threatening, and very aggressive behavior. She was often fighting with other inmates and was disrespectful to the guards. Here are segments of what the prosecution stated to the jury. There is a history of aggression. Mariah's death is proof of that. Look at Mariah. You've seen the photographs. No history of violence? Really? Are we talking about the same person? The same defendant? They got it wrong. I want to talk to you about Mariah and the nature of this crime against her. Look at this little girl. She was defenseless, innocent. Her daughter. The nature of this crime speaks for itself. She was beaten to death. This is not one time. Deliberate acts over and over on this poor little girl. This is a crime of hatred, a crime of violence, not just one time, not an accident. The manner of death of which this little girl died is also tragic. It's also horrific. There's many of you on this jury that work in the medical field and can understand the suffering that she endured from her little brain swelling. She let her lay there and suffer a very painful, cruel death. She could have simply called for help, taken her to a doctor, done something to protect this little girl. The manner of death in this case is so horrific because she suffered for so long. This little baby girl, it was simply torture and cruel. So once again, we see here that this does not seem to be a case of a trial focused on someone one day out of the blue getting up and committing a murder. Oh, Melissa Lucio may have been convicted of murder, but deep down she was convicted of heinous neglect, abuse, and torture that went on for an extended period of time of a child, possibly still in diapers. During the autopsy, doctors discovered that baby Mariah had a broken bone in her arm that doctors said appeared to have happened about two weeks earlier. When questioned about this, Melissa Lucille said she did not take the baby to a hospital because she was afraid of getting herself into trouble. The defense 
the defense's strongest argument is that she didn't do it. That Melissa Lucille's hands did not kill her daughter. The defense maintains that the injuries that crushed several sides of Mariah's head was caused by a fall down the stairs, even though medical examination experts have shown that those multiple injuries to the head could not have occurred from a single fall down a flight of stairs. It's impossible. We hear another argument from the defense now that most of Mariah's injuries were deliberately caused by one of uh, Melissa's teenage daughters who is known as Alex. In the end, do you think the jury cared who exactly inflicted the injuries? The adult, the mother, Melissa Lucille, must have seen those wounds perpetrated on that baby over the previous weeks or months. She must have known who was hurting the baby if it was not her. And there's no indication that she did anything to stop it. No, it appears the jury didn't care who exactly was hurting baby Mariah. During the interrogation of Melissa Lucio at the Harlingen Police Department, Melissa had said that she did not kill Mariah but that she is responsible for the child's death. Whether or not that statement that she is responsible was coerced by investigators questioning her, the jury apparently agreed. She, the mother, is responsible. Because of this, if Melissa Lucia was put to death on April 27, as scheduled, I suspect that perhaps aside from staunch opponents of the death penalty, there won't be too many that sympathize with her situation. The jury had heard how doctors had told investigators that baby Mariah had a severe bite mark on her back. Melissa Lucio explained that two weeks before Mariah's death, she was combing Mariah's hair. She grew frustrated with her other kids jumping around, and although Mariah had done nothing wrong, Melissa Lucio leaned down, placed her mouth over Mariah's back, and bit her. Call it senseless if you want, but I can see at least one juror in Texas wanting to give her the death penalty just for that. At least one. Further arguments put forth in defense of Melissa Lucio and to prevent her from being put to death speak of how she was sexually abused repeatedly since she was six years old that she had lived a life of poverty and struggled with a cocaine addiction, that there was appalling neglect on the part of Texas's Child Protective Services, following up on reports that the children were neglected and had even been homeless for at least a month, CPS removed some of the children from her care. But now the defense is that CPS didn't do enough to keep all the children safe. From some reports I have seen, it almost appears that the blame for baby Mariah's death can be placed on Child Protective Services. The defense also puts a lot of blame on the interrogation tactics used by Texas Rangers when questioning Melissa until 3.15 in the morning, an interrogation that went on for hours, starting soon after the baby was found dead. Lucio had waived her right to have a lawyer present, and the ending result was a forced or coerced confession. Here's another factor that Melissa Lucille supporters are letting everyone know. That the prosecutor in Melissa Lucille's case, the district attorney who prosecuted Melissa Lucille, a man named Armando Villalobos, was convicted of bribery and extortion for accepting more than $100,000 in cases totally unrelated to that of Melissa Lucille. As a matter of fact, those events had occurred before Melissa Lucio was taken to trial. That prosecutor is currently serving a 13-year sentence. Another issue raised by those arguing in Melissa Lucio's favor is how her lawyer failed to call to the witness stand any of Melissa Lucio's children, and that they would have said they saw baby Mariah fall down the stairs. Why didn't the lawyer allow the children to testify? Was he afraid that they might have been ripped apart by cross-examination? 
A psychologist that treated Melissa Lucille has said that she was susceptible to making a false confession because she had battered woman's syndrome, often considered a type of PTSD. In the film, Melissa Lucille tells the interviewer what she would tell Mariah if she could be reunited with her. I'm sorry that I wasn't there to protect her and that I failed her. I failed her in many ways. So there are two questions regarding this case. One, is there solid proof, concrete evidence that Melissa Lucio personally and intentionally bashed in several areas of baby Mariah's head? Maybe not. Maybe not. Two, is Melissa Lucille responsible for the death of baby Mariah? I'll leave you to answer that question. If you enjoy these death row stories, go ahead and subscribe so that you are alerted when the next one comes out. I am Paco Rivera. Bye for now. Thank you.